In the day's other headlines, more than half a million voters in Chicago have spoken, and they said no to the incumbent mayor. They'll decide who the next mayor will be very soon. John Yang reports on Tuesday's election results. Obviously, we didn't win the election. Chicago okay. Mayor Lori Lightfoot here. turned out of office after just one term. She got 17% of the vote, placing third in a nine-person field. Regardless of tonight's outcome, we fought the right fights and we put this city on a better path. No doubt about it. The first black woman and the first openly gay person to lead the city has become the first incumbent to lose re-election since Jane Byrne in 1983. It's a seismic event in Chicago history. The last Heather Sharon is a reporter at WTTW, Chicago's PBS station. That in 2019, she ran as a progressive but did not govern as a progressive, which let that community angry and frustrated and ready to pick a new candidate. The top two finishers advanced to a runoff in just five weeks, squaring off in a campaign that's likely to focus largely on crime and public safety. Thank you. Five weeks. Paul Vallis, the former CEO of Chicago schools, was in first place with a third of the vote. Thank you very much. Vallis is the only white mayoral candidate in a city that's about 29% black and 29% Hispanic. He says as mayor, he'd increase the number of cops on the street. The voters want a mayor who's going to you know, who's going to get the city back on track and, and is going to address uh, its most pressing issues. And obviously, um, the issue of public safety is front and center. Well, Chicago, we did it, y'all. <laughs> Brandon Johnson, a county commissioner and former teacher, says he'd focus on the root causes of crime. He finished second, edging out Lightfoot with 20 percent of the vote. A few months ago, they said they didn't know who I was. Well, if you didn't know, now you know. This is the most chaotic possible outcome of the vote last night with the two candidates, you know, completely ideologically opposed, you know, race, approach to schools, approach to public safety. Now that the runoff matchup is set, early voting starts later this month. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm John Yang. Late today, Mayor Lightfoot announced that Chicago's police superintendent, David Brown, will step down in two weeks. Both of the candidates in the runoff had vowed to replace him if they're elected. For the first time, police in Israel have used force against crowds protesting an overhaul of the nation's courts. It started after hundreds of people in Tel Aviv blocked highways today, waving flags. Officers on horseback used stun grenades and others fired a water cannon. They said protesters threw rocks and water bottles. Critics of the court plan say it would weaken the independence of Israel's judges. Rescuers in northern Greece spent the day searching for survivors and bodies after an overnight train crash killed 43 people and injured scores more. A passenger train and a freight train collided head on. Cranes were brought in to lift derailed cars as crews dug into the wreckage. The prime minister toured the site and promised accountability. What we are experiencing today is very, very difficult as a country. We're talking about an unspeakable tragedy. One thing I can guarantee, we will find out the causes of this tragedy and do everything in our power to make sure it never happens again. The cause of the crash is still unknown, but the Greek transportation minister resigned today and a station master in a nearby city was arrested. In Ukraine, a top government advisor suggested today that commanders might pull back from the besieged town of Bakhmut in the east. They've held out for months, but Russian forces are closing in on the last escape route. Shelling hit the nearby town of Chasiv Yar today, sending up thick smoke and leaving a grocery in flames. Ukrainian fighters have set up new defensive lines there. Back in this country, the latest winter storm to sock California is finally winding down. It dumped several feet of new snow east of Los Angeles. Farther north, the storm added to already staggering totals. Parts of the Sierra Nevada have gotten more than 41 feet of snow since October, the most in 50 years. The U.S. Senate moved today to keep climate change and various social responsibility issues 
out of investment decisions. The vote was 50 to 46 to block a rule that makes it easier for hedge fund managers to consider those concerns. The measure now goes to President Biden, who is expected to issue a veto. And on Wall Street, stocks struggled again as fears about inflation kept investors on edge. The Dow Jones Industrial Average gained just five points to close at 32,661. The Nasdaq fell 76 points. The S&P 500 lost 18. Still to come on the News Hour, LGBTQ Americans voice their apprehension as new state laws restrict their rights. Pharmaceutical giant Eli Lilly slashes the price of insulin after pressure from the government and consumers. The ruling party's candidate wins Nigeria's presidency after a disputed vote, plus much more. This is the PBS NewsHour from WETA Studios in Washington and in the West from the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism at Arizona State University.